Hello, everyone. Day 11, NapoRimo. Good morning. Well, it's morning for me. Um, wow, 11 days so far. I'm a little bit late releasing this video because I was just in a three day poetry therapy conference, but here we are showing up to the page, showing up to ourselves. Thank you for showing up to your own writing. It is really it is really good for the soul and the mind, I think. So thanks for being here. Let's get into today. And I have a um, sort of a long poem. So just FYI, strap in, but it's a really beautiful, lovely sounding poem. So if you want to just listen and let the sounds wash over you. So especially thinking about sound in today's prompt. This is Trailer Park at Two Days, which means studies, um, I believe, and by Connor O'Callaghan. Okay, so Trailer Park at Two Days in, in multiple parts. The first part is called The Stars. And I wish I could get rid of this header, but I don't know how, sorry. <laughs> so The Stars. The nights midweek are secrets kept no soul on sight, no signal, bars, and zilch for company except a zillion bright, disarming stars. I'll flit through ambers quicker, higher. I'll break each hamlet, stop or yield. I'll fix some noodles, start a fire, and climb up to the topmost field. The stars at first are sparse, unclear. They surface in that drag between the darkened glass and stratosphere of powder blue and bottle green. They blossom thick and fast in droves. They pulse in clusters, magnify. The smoke that's my pot belly stoves frays outwards through each needle eye. I'll head below. I'll char till dawn some apple logs down to their core by pewter light when stars have gone. I'll do a bit, a little more. The rain. You live inside its sound effects whole weeks on end. Its pin machine, its cardboard drum, its soft boiled eggs, its silent running submarine. It's like the god of liquid rubber stirred at dawn to slip downstairs and sip a cigarette, to drub his fingertips on solid layers. You poured across last summer's drought. You love it, learn to as it slows. And even as you come to doubt, it's dribs and drabs and pigeon toes. Forget the welcome rain outstayed. For days, the leaves are a parchment sheet and wind hangs chimeless in the shade. Still rain remains the point of heat. The rain is near like everything. It's best those seconds just before. The broad leaf's backwards canvas sling, the fly strip flapping through the door. The wind. The winds, this ancient bloke below who chunters we, who wheezes us, though no one else will come or go. You want to ask the wind, who's us? But hold your tongue till in your head the wind and him have somehow mixed the type of wind that loves a shed and banging on of things not fixed. A belt and braces, year-round wind, a kiln-dried, cobwebbed, hardwood wind, a greenhouse wind, a tree-bound wind, an end-of-season car boot wind, a padlocked shower unit wind, an upturned wheelie dumpster wind, a channel not quite tuned in wind, a hollow flight path thunder wind, a dog-eared wind, a knocked sign wind, a spouseless phantom ocean blown, aut autumnal graveyard Scots pine wind, who speaks in plurals, moves alone. 
the grass. One night last June in cups, in love with pickled gin from bubbly flutes, our clothes and coils about the stove, we climbed the dark in birthday suits. It's true, the grass was mown that day, like hippies chained in meadow flowers, we tripped above the cut and lay in blades of petrol suede for hours. We listened to the lowing black. We giggled, kissed, we possumed dead. We woke as flesh and straggled back like beasts for parlor, dressed, then read. We trafficked grass and bed spree, bed spray, bed Fred's shoes and never spoke of that again through winter's interregnum blues of being spooked by skin of when the only care we had was grass and the only stir for miles around our freezing bones, our clinking glass, our dying to be rumbled found. Mm. Okay, so what I want to bring your attention to in that poem is the sound play all the way through and all these different ways of rhyme, of internal rhyme, of assonance, alliteration, onomatopoeia, um, repetition, uh, just lots of sound in that poem. So thinking about sound, let's go ahead and get into the prompt. Today, <clears throat> uh, sound is a big part of poetry, okay? <laughs> poetry is something that is read in your mind, yes, but also meant to be spoken aloud as an oral tradition. Poetry began as an oral tradition and is related integral integrally to song and music. So poetry is like lyrics, you know, can be sometimes of um, lyrics to songs without the music, although we want there to be music in our poetry. So just thinking about music and poetry, that's just the point of um, focus I'm inviting you to have today. And so for today, here is our writing mantra, wherever you are, Think about these words. I am here and present with my experiences. I am grounded and open. I have unlimited access to an infinite flow of creativity always around me. Whatever happens on these pages today is what's meant to happen. I'm not judging myself or my writing. I'm just writing. I have everything I need to begin already inside of me. I'm settling in and I'm ready to write. All right, everyone. Okay, so let's start with a free write today, thinking about place. So with the poem we saw was very much about place. If you think about the title, Trailer Park at Today. So think of a place in your life that is significant to you. So it could be your childhood home, your adult home, your current home. It could be, you know, vacation, an outdoor area, like a park, someone in your friends or family circle that you love, um, a school, museum, there's so many places. Just think of one, give yourself a moment to let whatever that place today is for you arise. And then once you have your place, give yourself you know, five minutes or so to free write, specifically thinking about the sounds and sights that you remember or currently experience in this place. Uh, and of course, in a free write, anything that comes up is all fair game, you know, so whatever might be coming to you, just keep the pen moving. Maybe you encounter some memories or some ideas, whatever, emotions that come up for you uh, and then uh, enjoy and meet me back here when you're done. Oops, okay. Well, this is supposed to be called quick write, but this is also sort of a free write. So the next step is once you have your place and you've explored it in your writing and a free write a little bit, now I want you to think about 
breaking that place up into compartments in your mind for your poem, thinking about temporal or spatial areas of this place. So meaning different, different areas of time or different areas of space. For example, if you wanna divide your, your place up into space, you could be thinking about if it's a house, like different rooms or the backyard or a closet, you know, or a shelf, whatever it is. Um, if you're thinking about time, maybe you're thinking about the time, different time frames you've spent in this place, like seasons, ages, um, you know, re swaths of time. Okay, so think about that for a minute and choose maybe three, maybe four, there's no limit, but I think that's a good range of different compartments, either of space or time or both, or it could be also free associated. It could not be related to any of the things I just mentioned, but it could be natural and organic to you. What kind of compartments would you divide this place up into, okay? And then once you do that, this is all kind of one step, but once you do that for each one, you know, I'm imagining giving you some compartments, uh, putting your compartments in either rows or columns on your paper or a box or a circle, whatever you wanna do to just sort of give it a container, give each compartment a container. And then within that container, write down any sounds that you would hear in that particular compartment. So within say a house and you're in one room, what sounds do you hear in that room? And allow your brain to just invite any kind of onomatopoeia, which is when a word sounds like the thing that it is, like buzz or whir or click, click, click. You know, be thinking about sound when you're writing some words down, rhyme, anything else that comes to you, give it all free reign, sound, sound, sound in your compartments, and then meet me back here. All right, so this is only three steps today because it's kind of a longer study of sound across different sections. So uh, now that you have some compartments of your place, divide your poem into three or four, or however many compartments you had. So <laughs> number of compartments equals number of sections in your poem and allow your place if you want to be the title of your poem somehow. So like my house, you know, and then your compartments are the office, the living room, the kitchen, whatever, the bedroom. Um, so you can label each section as you're writing and you can do this in whatever order you want. Um, but imagine writing in each section a few quatrains. So whatever many you want, you know, one quatrain, you could do three. But anyway, quatrains are stanzas with four lines. So you can go to the poem that we use as an example and see that. Um, four lines and describe the sights and sounds of this place in each section. So use as much sound play like rhyme, alliteration, assonance, onomatopoeia, anything. That's why we did the brainstorm before of these words. Bring those words in when you write your poem. Focusing on sound, how does the poem sound? You can even read this one out loud as you go if you want. And if you want, add a rhyme scheme, okay? So, the example poem we looked at had an ABAB rhyme scheme that changed every stanza. So what that means is the first and third lines rhyme and the second and fourth lines rhyme. And then that rhyme scheme changes um, or it can change, you know, in each stanza. So see if you can play with that. You're already halfway there with your words that you've brainstormed. And let me just make a quick note about rhyme. Different people have different ideas about the role of rhyme in contemporary poetics. My opinion is that rhyme is a natural part of poetry because poetry is a sound-based art form. So even though it's very easy for people to criticize or dislike or dismiss rhyme in a poem, there is rhyme everywhere in poetry, whether it's an internal rhyme, a slant rhyme, 
Rhyme is an integral part of poetry. And so consider this prompt, if you would like, simply a practice gram. So have fun. Again, there's no one telling you not to rhyme. <laughs> I am telling you to rhyme and have fun with it. Don't worry about good or bad. Don't judge yourself. Again, this whole process is not about judging our writing, but just learning and practicing. Practicing writing and rhyme is really, really, really good for our sense of sound in our poem. So even if you don't want to be a formalist or a rhyming poet necessarily, practicing with sound devices will make your free verse poetry more exciting when it comes to sound. Okay, that's my opinion. Take it or leave it. Have fun with this prompt. I think it's a really fun one. Um, so, and there you go. All right, if you want to hear just a little bit about the poet and my relationship to this poem, I will just tell you, I read this poem in Poetry Magazine, which is the link I am putting in the description for you to encounter the poem, again, on your own if you would like. And so this is really the only poem I have read of this poet who's named Connor O'Callaghan. He is an Irish poet. Okay, so uh, let's let's um, definitely get outside of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> when reading poetry as much as we can. I'm gonna tr maybe try to do that more intentionally. But anyway, um, Connor O'Callaghan grew up in Dundalk, which is just south of the Irish border. Um, he has published four books and has some degrees and teaches creative writing um, at Sheffield Hellam University in England currently. And I really love this poem. And I'll be honest, I would love to read more of O'Callaghan's work. Um, he has, like I said, four books. So what I find interesting about this bio, I love when poets do this, which is um, like include something non-literary about themselves. So Callahan also really uh, has an interest in writing on sports, especially soccer and cricket. Uh, so there's so many dimensions to us as poets, like we're not just poets, right? Like I'm also so many other things, you're also so many other things. And I just think that's a fun and interesting thing to bring into the conversation. Thank you, O'Callaghan, for including that in your bio. That's real cool. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this prompt and I will see you again 